Hey you! Welcome back to my channel! Today I am going to talk about this find I got at Five and Blow. <laughs> it says 101 uh, watercolors. It's 100 watercolor palette um, pans and then the pink brush is what they are calling the 101. It's kind of flimsy. It has this weird styrofoam -y thing underneath to give it structure. It still doesn't have structure. So I made a couple of papers to swatch. <laughs> so that's what you're going to be watching me do. I actually use the brush that comes with the set. It isn't terrible. So it's back to school season and every back to school season I get involved in the the hunt for like good art supplies cheap. It's like you know my version of El Dorado. Every school year I get suckered into it. I'm like oh, it's five dollars. I do it at Walmart when I'm shopping for stuff I, everywhere and you know honestly no. <laughs> Every year I do it, and every year I'm like, yeah, no, you got to suck it in. But, like, look at this palette. There's 101 colors. I had to try it. I had to buy it. And I can tell you this palette is, it's, it's weird. It does not behave like any of my other watercolors, really, so much. It feels like, um chalk like for real like sidewalk chalk that's been compressed it, it's got the weirdest texture for watercolor it's got some nice colors some of the pans were harder to activate than others but I was, I was really quite pleased with how easy it was to get these watercolors baking baking cooking get them get them activated and going and you're gonna see a cut I accidentally made one too many rows of the little squares on this one I uh I miscounted so all right I have moved on to something else what I'm doing here is I am reactivating the dried swatches and I'm scrubbing I have a little flat brush that I'm scrubbing each one of the colors a little bit with water on to see how easily they lift up on a lot of cheap watercolors oh gosh okay Oh, I wish I could pause the film. So a lot of cheap watercolors will actually stain the paper. This is what my cups looked like after I went through the process. This is my clean one to dip and to add fresh water to change the consistency of the thing. And this one is my dirty cup. But see how it all settled to the bottom? I have never had, like... It just sank to the bottom in little chunks and the pigment didn't stay in the water. It's the weirdest thing. I had to film it and show it to you guys. Okay, so that is my swatches so I can have an idea of what colors to... Uh, what colors are what because there's it I, this is my first time using this palette and I didn't really remember what everybody did so I can tell you just like my experience with these guys is coming back to them and actually trying to paint with them Oh, not so much fun. I went for a smooth paper. I probably should have done the watercolor paper. I was debating. Everything sort of slides around on the top and getting a, a flat wash gradient. Flat, a flat field of color was super hard. Yep, I'm going back and I'm, I'm checking again to 
Yeah, I didn't like that color. I'm mixing my own. I, you can still do that even with a whole bunch of colors. <laughs> All right, I did not enjoy these guys whatsoever painting with them. And I don't know why through this whole thing, all like I, I should have pulled out a bigger brush. <laughs> I'm suffering for the small brush syndrome, which also makes it harder to get flat fields of color but the struggle was real with the whole time of of painting this little guy I got suckered in my hand like even just like looking at the recording of this looking at all those little pans of of watercolor I'm just like oh that's so beautiful I did not feel the love when I was mixing up the colors. Okay, I've stopped showing you that I'm checking my, uh, <laughs> my swatch chart. I got over it. it. You can see that as I go, I have to like count <laughs> which box I'm looking for. Sometimes you I look pretty slick and it looks like I know what I'm doing but if you're paying attention so you can totally see that I'm like internally counting fifth row down fifth guy over um and yeah I, I don't know <laughs> what else to say about this palette it, uh, you know, honestly, I think that as appealing as having all of these other, all these colors, that you would be better served by buying like a 99 cent pack of the Crayola watercolors. Don't buy, don't buy Rose Art. They're, they're super cheap right now in terms of art supplies, but they're, they're not, they're not as fun as watercolors that Crayola puts out. Maybe I should go buy myself a, a Crayola watercolor set and and show you guys uh, how much more enjoyable it is to use. They are, you know, I feel like Crayola as a brand in general is looked down, but you know what? They've got their stuff together. It's highly pigmented. In... I don't remember if they stain or not. It's been a hot minute since I've used them. We can check that out if I end up doing that. Let me know if you want me to do a video with the Crayola. Uh, like, I, I think they they get a bad rap. I think they're a fun art supply. They're definitely better than some other cheap art supplies. This one has the Hunter colors going for it, but yeah. I think that practicing color mixing and having a more pleasant experience would be the way to go. This blanket is coming out totally feminine looking and in my brain... I thought that this little frog was going to be a boy. <laughs> I guess he could be bar on somebody's blanket, but it's looking pretty feminine. I don't know. It was just the colors I was vibing with at that point in time. At one point in time, I was going to put a title on the book that he's like clasping to his heart. And... Uh, for a while, I went around and asked everybody what frogs dream of. And bless my friends and families, they gave me serious answers. And I just couldn't decide between what the, st what, what the answers were. And I decided that I would leave that up for interpretation. And y'all can look at this painting and think what do frogs dream of <laughs> oh i am getting ready to do something brave here which i feel like if you don't go for it you'll never know if you can so i'm gonna do an overlay on like a wash over top of this painting to create shadows you can see 
I am starting to, to do the shadow colors and washes and watercolor where you have this translucent layer to give shadows is a fairly common technique in watercolor. Oh, it's separated. It was the weirdest thing. I, I kept on trying to like hold it up to the camera to show what it was doing because it was so weird but it it really it really doesn't show and here i am i'm trying to do the the wash over top the painting and i was pretty sure that it was <laughs> gonna work but i i wanted i wanted it to look like he was laying in a sun dappled field underneath the trees and to give you the thought of like being in the sun in the shade in the summer and i feel like the bottom worked and it just didn't in the top work how it did in my mind's eye i don't know if i killed this painting or not um my family members all were like oh no it's still cute but i don't know i don't know if it works or not you let me know till next time <laughs> like subscribe see you around bye